the state we're in, human rights, human wrongs, and what we do about them. Produced by Radio Netherlands Worldwide, in partnership with WAMU 88.5 in Washington. This is The State We're In. I'm Jonathan Gruber. It's been over seven years since the overthrow of the Taliban in Afghanistan, and the right situation for many Afghans has improved. But a resurgent Taliban is a constant threat, and some NATO governments have asked if the war can ever be won. U.S. President Barack Obama has controversially suggested opening negotiations with the moderate Taliban. Fazia Kufi is a member of the Afghan parliament. She thinks negotiating with the so-called moderate Taliban doesn't make any sense. She believes the Taliban can't be divided into moderate or not moderate, especially when it comes to women's rights. And she's speaking from experience. I believe the Taliban period was the dark period in the country's history for women. Women were stopped from education, from the work, uh, from going out. Even they were deprived of going to visit a doctor when they were sick. And all the basic rights of women were uh, taken away from them. Uh, so as a woman, I believe that no talks and negotiation on political deal should violate women's rights in this country. Do you remember when the Taliban took power? Of course, I was uh, in Kabul. I was a student uh, at the Kabul Medical University. What was that day like when they came into the city? Uh, you know, they took over at night. It was a Friday. On Thursday evening, I went out with my um, sister uh, to get some uh, stationery for myself. There were some shopkeepers who were telling me and my sister that, you know, this is your last day you're coming out without burqa. So uh, try to walk as much as you can. And we didn't believe that. What was it like the first time you had to put on a burqa? Uh, uh, I, I couldn't walk and I felt like, you know, I'm more than 70 years old. I was in a good position at university. I was in second position in my uh, medical university. And I was like the top student. Uh, and I had a big dream of the future that I will have a, be a doctor and have my own clinic. When I wear burqa and start wearing hijab and I had to sit at home, I thought that never that uh, opportunity will come again and uh, we, we are obliged to continue life like in a prison. Um, so there you were, an accomplished, educated young woman with plans for the future. You saw them all as, disappear. What did you do? Uh, you know, I was uh, just at home. Um, sometimes it happened to me that uh, I spent most of my day crying uh, as there was nothing else to do. Six months after Taliban came, because I had nothing else to do in life, so I got married. Um, education was banned, school, university, everything, no work. The only option I had was to make my life, <laughs> and I got married. Uh, my husband was a university lecturer. He was not a politician, but I was coming from a political family. So they put my husband in jail immediately after, like, 10 days after our marriage. Um, so they put your husband in jail simply because he was married to you? Uh, simply because he married me and I came from a political family. He was in the prison for one night, then they released him the, the next day. And three months after that, they put him again in jail uh, for six months. So he spent like uh, more than five months in, in jail and uh, he was af affected by TB, by tuberculosis in jail. And then when he was released from prison, he, he died. He passed away. When did that happen? Um, this was like uh, 1997. Twelve years ago. Yeah. What did you do after that? I went to Badakhshan uh, with my husband because my husband was sick, but he was alive. So we both went to Badakhshan, uh, which was not controlled by Taliban. I started working with UN, came to Kabul, and he passed away, and I continued my work with UNICEF and other civil society organization. It's dangerous to be a politician in Afghanistan anyway. Being a woman politician is even more dangerous. Why do you want to do it? You know, at the end of the day, one has to make a choice, either to continue doing something or you want to you know, live like a passive life. Have you ever felt threatened? Yes, I was uh, many times wa received warning uh, by Taliban and by other people in my statements and my positions that I take. Uh, so it's, but do you uh, take it seriously? Um, I take the necessary measures, security measures, but I never, it never stopped my work. It never stopped my life. You have two daughters, don't you? I have, yes, I have two daughters. 
Are you ever worried about their safety? Um, no one is safe in Afghanistan, you know, particularly the f- politicians and uh, their family, and especially me being, you know, um, more <laughs> outspoken. I think uh, with any statement that I make, uh, I make myself put myself and my family, and particularly my daughters, more at risk. Uh, of course I'm worried about their safety. Uh, I'm worried more about their safety than mine. Can you ever let your daughters out of your sight? No, no. In fact, they uh, go to school, and when they come back, they are like prisoners at home. Um, last year, for the first time, I was busy in an interview and in a meeting with my constituents. They went out of the house to do some shopping, for, and they, were, they disappeared for one hour. And um, in fact, that one hour was the most unforgettable unfor- one hour in my life because I cr- cried and I didn't know what I was doing. So I'm worried more about them uh, rather than mine because for me, at least I managed to pave a way for some woman. You know, I managed to at least become the role model for some people in this country that they could follow my way. But for them, they have just started their life. What makes it worth living with this kind of risk and fear? Risk and fear is a part of the life. Now, I, I'm used to this risk and fear. In fact, when I go in the morning, I'm not expecting to come back safe in the evening. And sometimes, you know, I prepare some letters for my daughter that in case anything happened to me, at least they know what is the life, I mean, what should they do? And I have this letter in my cupboard, and sometimes I... When I go, uh, I ask Shahrzad, who is my elder daughter, to, you know, read this letter if I'm not there anymore. Fazia, if the Taliban, moderate or otherwise, got back into power, what would your daughter's lives be like? Uh, I never imagined that uh, we go back to that situation. But uh, I think, like many millions of Afghan children, uh, women, they will have to just go back to home and continue their life as a uh, only uh, house lady. They will have no future, uh, despite the fact that my daughter wants to become one day the president. If Taliban comes, uh, then there is no future for the, for our children. We need to bring peace and stability and democracy, which guarantee human rights and a free society for our our next generation. We are the sacrifice. We accept to be the sacrifice, but they shouldn't be the sacrifice. You said that you wrote a letter to your daughters in case something should happen to you. What do you tell your daughters in that letter? (sighs) I I put in in that letter that... um, you know, what is the life like? Uh, um, who should they live with until they finish the schools? The main thing is that I encourage them to continue the struggle. But if they read that line, that they should continue the struggle, that means that you're no longer with us. Is this struggle worth your life? Um, n- no, we will die one day or another. The good part of life will be that we'll uh, die in a situation that we leave something behind for others, like we bring a difference to others' life. So that is very important because if we, we live in a corner and we, uh, we are born in a corner that nobody knew about us, we live in a corner and we just survive for ourselves, everybody can do that. We will die anyway. The pride will be that you die with a, bringing a positive impact into somebody's life. So they have to continue that. Fauzia Kufi speaking to me from her home in Kabul. This is The State We're In from Radio Netherlands Worldwide. I'm Jonathan